Now, it contributes around £3 billion to the UK economy, but the toy industry has had a challenging year, like many other retailers, and one that saw Toys R Us go out of business. So how are they feeling and preparing for the months ahead? Our Brexit reporter Mark Ashdown is at the International Toy Fair uh, in London. It's quite quiet there, Mark. <laughs> it is really just, we've just, just gone home for the day, but here is a stat which will make any parent's eyes water. The average spend per child in the UK on toys last year, £319. No wonder then, although Christmas is just uh, behind us for most of us, they're already looking ahead to next year. And this I have in my hands here is a list of the 25 toys expected to do really well over the coming year. Now, grab a pen, Riz. Uh, the Connects Dragon Reven Revenge Coaster, uh, the Chimpy, the Magic Spelling, or the ritzy rollers dance and dazzle spark. You heard it here first. But of course, there's something to be said for longevity. And this family business, which runs out of Sutton, has been going for a hundred years. This, the f one of the first games they ever produced. And now it has been a difficult time over the past few years across the industry and with Brexit on the horizon, what does the future hold? There's millions of toys all under one roof. It's called, oh, hang on. It is, though, the collapse of Toys R Us which has sent a chill through this year's Toy Fair. UK sales were down 7% last year, hardly a car crash, but £246 million less profit to share around. Lots then depends on these, the 25 hottest prospects for the year ahead. Kids are migrating out of toys a bit earlier into social media and screens and things like that. But having said that, we're going back to basics in some ways, uh, spending more family time together. So we've seen uh, things like puzzles and games as well um, grow really successfully in the last couple of years. Most here import from the Far East, so all eyes are on Brexit negotiations. If import costs go up, smaller businesses are already thinking about contingencies, like manufacturing in the UK itself. It's something that we could look into. There's always a way around these things, so, you know, if need be, then we can change that. Wooden toys are traditional, and, you know, it doesn't grow old, and we want to keep it, you know, want to keep it going. <laughs> Kids grow old, but toys don't. Yeah. <laughs> Even the biggest players are having to plan. Lego sold here is actually made in the Czech Republic. We are looking at you know, different options at the moment, what, what's happening, as everybody uh, will be, you, know, you have to do. Um, we are looking at different scenarios with our partners and uh, you know, everybody can rest assured there will also be Lego available post-Brexit. So we are doing you know, what we need to do to make sure this is being taken care of. So whatever direction Brexit takes us in, there's hope for the year ahead. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Kate Gibson from Gibson's. Uh, now, we heard there, family-type games are still doing quite well. Are you fairly optimistic then? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, while the whole toy market um, generally is um, having a little bit of a tough time, games and puzzles are actually fairly buoyant at the moment. And particularly jigsaw puzzles for adults are actually seeing some growth, which is fantastic. So... Uh, Gibsons, we're a British family business, I'm fourth generation, and we produce um, lots of jigsaw puzzles for the adult market. So, mm. I mean, we heard there about uh, stuff being imported from the Far East, China. Uh, do you import stuff as well yourself? Are you, are you sort of worried about what Brexit might mean for you? We do, we import um, from the Far East, but we also produce um, jigsaw puzzles in the UK and in Europe. So, yes, yeah, certainly um, it has caused us a little bit of a headache, wondering uh, obviously what's going to happen. Um, and all we can do from, a, um, from our point of view is um, make sure we're planned in terms of um, paperwork that's required, work with freight forwarders, um, we're getting a bit more stock in to make sure that we're covered, um, and yeah, just see what happens. And I suppose there is an opportunity, perhaps. We keep being told there's a big wide world, we could start trading with other countries. I mean, you export as well, I understand? We do, yeah. We're at the moment um, experiencing some growth worldwide. So, yeah, there's definitely opportunity out there. We work with a number of distributors worldwide um, and we've got some great customers in Europe. So we will be interested to see what happens. Mm. And I keep being told by businesses and entrepreneurs like yourself, you just want to know what's happening. Uh, once you know, you, you can plan and you can work ahead. Yeah, absolutely. It is frustrating. And once, once we know, we can get on with it. Um, but for us, the focus very much this year is our 100-year anniversary. And we're particularly excited um, about that and focusing very much on 
what we're doing and what we do well. Um, and there's lots of positivity out there in the market um, and jigsaw puzzles are, are, are doing very well for us. So. And you got two daughters, they already had their arm twisted, they're taking over, fifth generation? We shall see, they're certainly very enthusiastic at the moment, um, which is very exciting. Um, they get involved in all sorts with the business um, in terms of testing products and photography and so yeah. Okay. Well, listen, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, there are hundreds of uh, toy manufacturers here exhibiting. This is the 66th, would you believe? Uh, I'm going to help out with a puzzle here, though. It is a map of Europe. It is a puzzle. I didn't choose it, I promise. Uh, but I think I'll be on edges, shall I? Thanks, <laughs> Thanks to you, Riz. Thanks, Mark. It looks like a little person's paradise there. Uh, thanks very much.